Oh yeah, today I'd like to talk about QNAP encryption. So the different encryption often, uh, options we offer on the NAS itself. Uh, we have different ways of doing it. So some can be hardware encryption directly on the drive if it supports it. Um, the other ways can be um, through the uh, software to do it when creating volumes on the NAS. And we even do shared folder encryption as well. Uh, so I'll cover off a few of these different options here. So in this NAS, um, I've got a couple of M.2 SSDs that is just my sort of main volume that I'm using. Um, but I'll demonstrate the encryption on the two two and a half inch SATA SSDs I've added in, as well as the two um, hard drives I've also got in the device as well. And um, to prep for this, all I've done is create a storage pool on the hard drives and I've left the SSDs completely free and empty. Um, so I'll talk about the SSDs first of all. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go create and do a new storage pool. Um, this will only work if you're not using the SSDs already. Now here you'll get a little prompt here for different uh, features that you can have. One of them is Q-tier, which we've done other videos on. Uh, the other option at the bottom there is um, SED, which is a self-encrypting drive. So if you have um, drives that support um, SED technology, you can use that. So I'm going to enable the SED option down here. Um, and it's only going to show me drives that have capability to use SED here. So I can see here um, I've got the TCG Opal options. Um, so I'm going to tick both of those. So select both of those for the SED um, encryption that I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to change it to RAID 0. I don't recommend it. It's just for speed for the video. So that just sets up a, bit, a bit quicker for me with RAID 0. So I'm going to enable that. Um, so here with RAID 0, I'm going to enable that. Click Next. And now it wants me to enter um, the self-encrypting drive settings. So the password that I'm going to use for that. Um, so here, if I just use a nice secure password of QNAP QNAP. Type that twice. Um, you now do get an option here to auto unlock on startup. Uh, so what this will do is it will automatically unlock um, this pool, this volume, um, as soon as the NAS boots up. Um, so one, one thing I did want to highlight with this is if somebody was to take your drives out of the NAS, then they're completely safe, fully encrypted and locked. Um, nobody's going to be able to get the data. Um, but be cautious on ticking this auto unlock on startup. If um, somebody was to take your whole NAS with the drives inside, the NAS will be typing in the encryption key for them. Um, so I would generally advise against using auto unlock on startup. Um, if you don't unlock them on startup, it does mean you have to log into the user interface of your NAS um, and then type in the encryption password to unlock the volume to gain access to it. Um, so you've got to remember your password. We have no um, hidden way to recover your data. If you forget the password, we can't recover the data for you. So it's very important to make sure that you've done that correctly. Um, so here I'm just going to click Next and then Create. Um, so just another warning that um, if you do forget the password, all data is going to be lost. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to click Continue. Um, so that's now going to go off and create the, uh, the storage pool uh, using SED, so self-encrypting drives. So that's one method uh, that we have support for. Now, when you go and look at a NAS, we do have lots of different options on the NAS um, compatibility list so that you can pick a drive that does match it. So if I go look at this NAS that I'm using here, so the TS462, and I click the compatibility button on the product page, I can go to the hard drive and go to SSD. And it's going to show me down here drives that have SED support. So as we scroll down the list, we can use the filters here if we want and pick a filter. So non-SED or TCG Opal ones. Um, so here I can see all the drives that have support uh, for um, the SED technology. So if you wanted to pick a drive uh, that is compatible with SED, then this is where you would go to make sure that the drive that you want to use in the NAS uh, can, uh, can use SED technology. Um, so that's just creating uh, that SED pool that I created. Um, now, with the SED, it is done at the pool level. So it's hardware encryption on the drive. So it's done at the pool level when you create the pool. Um, when you create um, uh, with it on hard drives, when you're using the software encryption effectively, um, that's happening uh, a little bit differently. So that's happening on the volume level, uh, which is why I created Storage Pool 2 already with the hard drives. So here it wants me to create a new volume. So 
um, I'll create a new volume. Um, I can again do volume encryption on top of the SED if I want to, so I can have double encryption. Um, I'm not going to do that for this volume, so I'm just going to say next, 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 uh, effectively on this. So I'm going to get a volume created within that storage pool 3 that I just created. Now what I can see is I can see that I do have a padlock symbol that's unlocked. So it's letting me know encryption is enabled, uh, but currently it is unlocked. So what I can do is I can see I've got a data volume 2 there, um, so it is ready to use. So I can click that ready um, option, so it's a hyperlink that I can click, and it's going to lock the drive. So I'm going to click OK on that one, and it's going to lock it. So I can actually manually lock the, uh, the volume again, the volume and pool with an SED here. Um, so there, that's locked. I can no longer access Data Vault 2. It's giving me no information about it. Again, if I want to unlock it, I can click the lock symbol. I'm going to need the password, so I need to type in that QNAP, QNAP nice and secure password that I had. Oops, makes this say never. And it's going to unlock and remount the volume. Um, it does happen pretty quick, so it's, um, it's able to um, mount the drive pretty fast as well. Um, the next step I'm going to do is create a volume based encryption um, on the hard drive area which was in the storage pool 2. So right now storage pool 2 is completely empty, there's nothing in there. Um, so I'm going to create a, a volume there and this time I'm going to do the volume level encryption um, option that we had, uh, that we saw before. So we'll just let that finish unlocking and then we'll go do that. Okay, so we can see that Storage Pool 3 is now unlocked and it's ready to go um, and everything's showing again. So I've got all the information about the capacity and the volume information. Um, so now I'm going to go create new volume. Um, now it's going to be important for me here to pick Storage Pool 2 because that's the one that doesn't, that's using hard drives that doesn't have SED drives. Uh, so I can see unallocated space, there's about 18 terabytes, that's fine. Uh, thin volume, doesn't matter which I'm picking. I'm going to leave it on thin, click next. So now down here I've got options to enable the volume encryption. Uh, so again, you get the same options as with SED, so you've got to type in a password. So I'm just going to type in QNAP QNAP, and you get the option for auto unlock on startup. And this is no different from SED drives. We have no way to get around this encryption. If you forget your password, the data is gone. Um, so that's fine. I've, I've chosen QNAP QNAP. I'm going to click next. I don't need that for the demo. Click next and click finish. So again, that was the final warning there, just letting you know that if you do forget the password, all the data will be gone. Um, so now it's going to create a, um, a padlock, but this time instead of being on the storage pool, um, it's going to do it on the volume instead. So it's going to put it at the volume level um, instead of um, on the full pool. If you wanted a padlock on both the SED ones there, um, you would have to do volume encryption as well as the SED option. Um, so I can see it's also downloading the key here. So it's downloaded the actual key so that I can upload the key if I wish for the volume encryption. So that's sort of a uh, an item you could maybe put onto a USB key and put in a, a locked safe somewhere. So if you needed an emergency recovery, if everybody forgot the password, you could have that as a safeguard as well. Um, so that's uh, the volume locked as well. Now we also support this on uh, USB drives. So when you're attaching USB drives to the NAS, um, you will have to format the USB drive, but you can format the USB drive and turn on encryption on that as well in very much the same way. Um, so there's a different way to do that as well. So you can enable um, encryption in lots of different ways on the NAS. Um, so using the encryption does make the performance slightly slower. Um, it does depend on the NAS as to how much slower. We do try to give a guide on the website. Um, so if we go to product and then go to NAS performance, uh, for most NAS we do now list uh, the different figures for the different NAS. So if I go um, by product uh, and I'll pick a different NAS here. So we'll just pick the one that's selected here, a 1677AXU. Um, so as we go down here, it's going to show different performance. I'm just not sure if this one's got the one for with and without encryption enabled on it. I might have to pick a different one. Let's have a look at this one. <clears throat> so yeah, here we go. So here's one where we show a SMB file transfer with a 10 gig file. And then we also show the same thing 
um, but with a 10 gig file with encryption enabled. So you can see the performance effect it's going to have um, on the different NAS. We try to be as transparent as possible that um, performance can be slightly less uh, with the encryption enabled. Um, some NAS have um, dedicated um, um, instructions on the CPU. Um, so for example, a lot of the Intel ones have AES-NI, so the, the new instruction set, which means that the there's a part of the CPU dedicated to doing encryption. So um, the performance hit is very minimal, um, but it does depend on the unit. But here you can check um, what the performance is going to be with and without encryption enabled. Um, but that was doing encryption um, on, a, on a QNAP NAS. Um, so you've got different levels, SED drives. Again, just go and check the compatibility list to make sure that you're picking a drive um, that supports um, SED. Um, you've also got options to do volume level encryption, and that can be on drives within the NAS, um, as well as USB drives. And those drives for volume encryption do not have to support SED. So um, really any combination of hardware, you should be able to get some level of encryption on the NAS. Um, just one last word of caution again on that um, automatically unlock the volume at startup. Um, that's effectively ticking a save password box in the NAS. Um, the NAS will type the password in and unlock the volume. Um, it doesn't know if it's been stolen or not. So just make sure that um, you're using the options that are better, uh, best suited to your, your situation. Um, in a lot of cases, um, I would generally recommend not to save the, um, the key in the NAS. Um, it is a little more inconvenient because you do have to log into the user interface to unlock the volume to actually use the data, but it's so much more secure. Um, if anybody has any questions um, on, on encryption on a QNAP, uh, please do leave it in the comments section down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.